I have been saying that I am going to redo this video for the longest amount of time and I'm finally gonna redo it. <laughs> the first time I did this, it was put in, cut into two parts and I was using like the paint application that comes with windows like that paint 3d and yeah that was a while ago and i no longer need that to remove backgrounds because i have critter i had critter back then too i just didn't know how to use it properly so now we're gonna do it properly so i'm gonna tell you how to remove a background off of an image with Krita and Krita is a free program in case you did not know but yeah so we're gonna do two we're gonna do this first one which is really simple I actually just did this today which is why it's not edited or anything I scanned it in and this is what it looks like when I scan it in so the blacks aren't very black when I scan in because of the uh, scanner obviously it washes it a little bit so I'm gonna be removing the background and then just fixing this up so it's very black usually I do black and white art so moving backgrounds for me is super easy it's very simple it's quick it's an easy process it's not really complicated but just in case you guys needed to see something a little more complicated I do have this other image and this is something that I did on procreate and so I'll show you how to remove the background on this one as well so you can see two versions of how I remove the backgrounds off of things using Krita which is a free program like I said so let's get started because I don't want this to be too long but anyways for simple backgrounds where all of the background is one color or most of it is one color um, I go over here to this little section over here and I take the magic wand tool and then I click whatever part of the screen has the background color that I don't want in this case it's white so like I said this is for really simple ones so I click that you can see all the little marching ants all around and it looks like everything is selected where I want it except for this little area right here is not selected and I want that to be selected as well so I will hold down the A key and then I'll just click that part as well and that'll just add it to the already selected area so now both of these areas are selected and now that it's all selected I will just hit the delete key on my keyboard and that'll give me this <laughs> so as you can see that quick and that simple and that easy the background has been removed that's it the background's gone we're good to go um there's still some little speckies everywhere so like these little specks i don't know if you can see them but for things like that that are left on the page i just go over here select the eraser tool go over here select the freehand brush tool so that way i can just erase these So now all the background is clear just because i'm already here i'm also going to show you how i just darken this to get it as black as i like my images to be just real quick so i just select all of the black so this eye is not attached to anything so it didn't get selected so i'll hold down a and then click the area that i want and now that it's in the add mode i don't have to hold down a anymore i can just click all the areas that i want and it'll add them to the selection Okay, and once everything is all selected, I go over here to the brush tool. I just use this, this basic pen all the time. Drag my color up to black. Go over here and hit the paintbrush. Make my size as large as it can get. And then I just go across the whole image and darken everything. So this way it matches the original more correctly because I use ink. And when you use ink, the blacks are like super black. So I'm just gonna go over it two times. Deselect and now my image is black in the way it should look and that is how I get super crisp black images So now to add a background back on to this image now that the background's all empty I'm gonna go over here and hit the plus so we get another layer I'm now gonna move that layers now on top of my original layer I'm just gonna move that layer to the bottom with this arrow right here It's gonna move the layer down and now when I color I'm gonna be coloring on the bottom layer so it'll affect the bottom layer but not the top so I won't be coloring on this demon lady I'll be coloring on the background so let's just say I want like a golden color for the background let's go this nice yellow I'm gonna select my color over here go over to the brushes again make the size as big as I can get and then I'm just gonna color in the entire background and that is how you change the color, the background. That's how you remove and put back on a new background on Krita. So it's really simple, it's really easy, especially if you use super like simple images like mine where it's just like black and white or like two colors or whatever. It's very easy to remove the background, very easy to add a new one on. 
But let's say you have an image like this and you're like, I can't just select the background because the background is two different colors. So there's another way to do it, but it's not as simple as my way. <laughs> It'll take you a little bit more time, but you can still do it. So for this kind, instead of hitting the magic wand tool, the, or whatever, continuous selection tool, excuse me, instead of hitting this one, I'm gonna call it magic wand. Instead of hitting the magic wand tool, you're gonna hit this like a lasso tool. And this is going to help you be more precise in what you're selecting. So if I wanna select this whole image, um, I would start out with just like a crude selection. So let's say I want this, the white um, outline as well. So I would start off with just a very crude outline of all the area that I want. I'm not gonna zoom down, so I'm just gonna go across. But don't worry, we can fill it in after. <laughs> I'm gonna meet back up with the original point. So now you can see all the dancing um, ants and all of that area is selected. So if I want to add more to it now, once again, I'm gonna hold down A so that will add the selection. So hold down A and then this is where I can get more precise. I'm just gonna loop it all in together. And if you can see it now added that new selection in. So once you hold down A the first time, you no longer have to hold it down and you can just select all the areas that you wanna add in. But you wanna make sure you're making a loop every time because otherwise these can get kind of complicated. So if you're gonna do this, loop it in and connect it. Loop it in and connect it, you know, that type of thing. So loop it in, connect. You know, you get the idea. So that's what I'm doing, I'm just Looping all this in and connecting it. And every time I do that, it's adding it to the selection. I don't know if you can see it, but you probably should be able to. Here you'll be able to tell. See, and now the dotted lines go all the way up. So the dotted lines is what is selected. So we're gonna loop it in and select it. And now let's say that I select like accidentally, I go all the way over there and I get some of the cloud and I'm like, oh crap, how do I take that out? If you wanna remove a part of a selection that you didn't mean to select, you're gonna hold down the S, which is gonna subtract it, and then loop out everything you don't want. That part's still left, so there. But now to get back to adding, now you wanna hit A again, just to add back on. But like I said, once you do it the first time, it'll keep it, so if I hold down S, and then subtract something. I don't have to hold it down the next time, it's already on subtract. When I'm ready to add things again, I have to hold down A for the first time, add it in, and then after that, I don't have to hold down A anymore because it'll already be on the add feature if I'm making any sense, I'm trying. So I'm just gonna go around and select everything so you can see what I do after. Right, so I've got pretty much all of it selected. It's not very neat, but obviously if you wanted to, you could go in and you could like neaten this up a bit more. The important part is that all of the white is in my selection because I could always erase the other stuff afterwards. You know, like you can always go outside of what you want, but if you can't go like, you can't add back on. So it's easier to have more than to have less, so yeah. So this is just a crude outline of it. I'm not gonna try to get like super neat. This is just the idea of it. I at least just wanna have make sure I have all of the white. Okay, so now that I have all of the white selected and all the outline, even though it's all wobbly, um, now what I want to do is erase the background. If I go in and erase right now, I'm gonna actually erase my image and not the background because the image is what is selected. So in order to get the background selected, I'm just gonna go on my keyboard and I'm gonna hit Control, Shift, and then I. And what that'll do is that'll make the dots inverse. So instead of this being selected in the image, now the background is selected. So if you can see, the marching dots are now around the outside of the image and on the outside of my demon so i'm gonna go over to the erase tool the eraser then i'm gonna go grab the brush over here make it a bigger size and i'm just gonna erase the entire background 
And if you select something and you want the opposite of what you select, because sometimes it's easier to select what you don't want instead of what you do. So you can always select the inside of the image and then like something that's simpler than this, if it was a lot simpler. If the image is simpler and the background's more complicated, you could always select the image and then just inverse your selection. So the reason why I said it's easier to sometimes grab more than what you need is because now that I have a little bit of this pink, it's much easier to just go ahead and erase this extra that I don't need. So you can go in and clean up your image once you're done. Or you can be super precise when you're doing the selecting and make sure that you don't have any of the background selected. It just depends on what's easier for you. But you, remember, you can always erase the extra that's left, but you can't add back on what's gone. So it might be easier to leave a little bit of the background and then just erase it depending on what type of image that you have. But you guys get the idea. I'm not gonna like remove all the erasing, I mean all the pink, but now that this does not have a background, we would do the same thing to add a different color background back on. Go over here, hit the plus tool. The layer two is now on top of layer one. We'll move it below layer one. We'll give this a nice dark purple background. So I'm um, grab the color that I want, grab the brush that I want, and then now that layer two is underneath layer one, we will just paint. And there you go. And this would actually help you clean it up even more because now that you have an image on top, you can kind of see exactly where you need to erase. So if I go on layer one and I start to erase the top layer, the bottom layer will just reveal itself. <laughs> So yeah, obviously I'm like not doing it properly right now. I'm like all messy, but if I needed to do it for real, I'd be a lot more neater. But this is just to show you the easy way that you can remove backgrounds and add new backgrounds onto your images. So that was for the more complex background. And this was for the simple background and that's all. That's how I edit my pictures. Um, even for this one, like the background that I created was a different file so Alex I'll show you on this one um, I'm gonna delete the yellow background it's just bonus you can leave right now if you got the information that you wanted <laughs> it's just bonus info usually add like a different background like let's say I wanted to put that pink cloud that was in the back of this onto this image that's a separate file that I also created on procreate but it is its own file so let me just find it <laughs> Oh, I know where it is. It's in my Shopify store because it's the background for my mouse pads. <laughs> so I'm just going to, I went file. I selected the file that I wanted to add as the background. It'll come in as a whole new tab up here. So it comes in as its own image up here with the tabs. It came in as its own tab. I'm going to hit control A, control C. And I now have this entire layer copied in my clipboard. I'm gonna go back over to my original drawing. As you can see, there are tabs up here. So each drawing is in its own tab. You can open as many as you want in Krita, which is not too many high quality files because Krita will crash, but <laughs> you get the idea. So now that I'm back in this original one, I'm gonna hit Control V and I'm gonna paste in that cloud file and it'll show up as a separate layer it's on the layer on top but that's fine I'm gonna go to this transform tool over here which is this picture frame tool hold shift so this enlarges uniformly I'm gonna enlarge it scooch it over and then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna hit the down arrow and that's gonna move that layer below this demon image <laughs> As soon as it loads, it's gonna take a little while, but once it does, it'll have its own background and it'll be a separate background than one that I created in Krita. So as you can see, you can make separate backgrounds, you can download separate backgrounds, and you can still add those onto your images. So that was just a little bonus tidbit about getting separate images onto your backgrounds. So yeah, that's it. I'm done. I finally did this video. I was gonna do it a million times before, but I finally did it. Okay, bye.